uh, uh, I'm American. Um, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not a cunt. I, uh, I can't fire a gun. <laughs> I'm from California. So I can fire my yoga teacher, but I can't fire a gun. But um, not that I would, namaste. But uh, <laughs> it's a bit weird there. I feel a bit tender when I'm there because I'm not armed like everybody else, you know? People are stealing cars that are not for the car, but for the gun in the glove compartment because everybody's worried. <laughs> you can't honk without like, getting a bullet through your head. It's kind of exciting if you're young. <laughs> Everything moving fast, but I'm a bit old, so I can't really manage. But I showed up in California recently to see my dad because he's 87, and ha yeah, he hasn't got COVID yet. And um, <laughs> we're going to try to make that happen. And uh, <laughs> it's just so unfair, you guys. He's so rich and so fucked up. He's got so much money, and he won't spend a penny on his kids. Get that? He just sits in the garage in the suburbs, drinking brandy all day long, drunk off his ass. Um, yeah, it sounds great. And uh, <laughs> it is great, but my sister's like, oh, we, we can't let him drive. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, but he might kill someone. Well... He lives in a retirement community with other old people, probably not spending money on their kids. <laughs> Surely we can build this dream together. <laughs> I mean, he's alone, you know, his wife died, and usually when one old person dies, the other one follows. It's the rule. We need the bed, fuck off. <laughs> but he's not hearing us. We had her, um, <laughs> she died last year, not from COVID, from being bigoted, and, uh, <laughs> and having stairs in the house, so... <laughs> <laughs> Guess he drives a new RAV4. But anyway, <laughs> we had her cremated after she died. Because uh, we're not German. So now she's, um, <laughs> I, know, I know, too soon, too soon. <laughs> now she's in an urn we eat around her. She finally serves her purpose. But, but like I said, my sister beat me at the airport, right? And uh, she said to me, did you bring a gun? I'm like, no, I don't own a gun. I live in London, where, where, where people read. And, um, <laughs> and she said, oh, you're very brave to not have a gun. She said, I, I bought a gun. I'm like, you live in a, a wealthy suburb of San Francisco. Why would you own a gun? She said, well, I'm afraid that the terrorists can see me. <laughs> well, well, cut back on the rich desserts. <laughs> she's, a, she's a big lady. And then... Um, <laughs> And then she said, but what about my daughter? You know, what if they kidnap my daughter? I'm like, they'll return her. Because <laughs> she's a little bit of a bitch. And um, <laughs> when they do, maybe she'll have a skill or be bilingual or something. Who knows? <laughs> the silver lining. Um, I'm also Jewish. Uh, <coughs> just thought I'd <laughs> tell you. It's a defense mechanism. And um, <laughs> are there any radical Muslim fundamentalists in the room tonight? Usually they're just dying for attention. If there are, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's London, mate, and their jokes don't, don't get worked up. I don't believe in boundaries, really. They kind of bo bother me all that boundary stuff. You know, I mean, what's a, what's a Palestinian, right? Other than you know a homeless Egyptian. I think we're all <laughs> we're all in this uh, <laughs> together. So I read the Quran out of respect because I want to try some jokes about it. <laughs> it's a gold mine of comedy material. The jokes just ooze off the page. <laughs> the Quran is a reaction to the Bible. You know, in the sequels, <gasps> they're never as good. But I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I liked it. It's cute, the Quran. Have you read it? It's adorable, right? Are you uh, a Quran person? I'm not. You're not. But you read it. No, I haven't read it. All right. You look familiar. Anyway, um, <laughs> just he has read it. All right. Okay. Which one of you is flirting with me right now? Because, <laughs> oh, Bo, okay. Well, Daddy's working. So um, you uh, just <laughs> lay back and take it like a Marine. I know what I'm doing. And... Um, I'll see you in the men's toilet. <laughs> but you won't see me. <laughs> 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 
Well, you should read the Quran. It's really good. In the Quran, that's great because Jesus is in the Quran more than the Bible. The bitch gets around and uh, <laughs> rattling on and on. But he and Muhammad are buddies. See, we can all get along, can't we? Muhammad's in the desert, right, selling uh, stuff like pickles out of a van, whatever. And <laughs> busy, busy, busy. He's a bit of a bear, chubby, real chubby. And um, <laughs> a hairy back, if you like that kind of thing. And he bends over <laughs> at one point in the desert, you know, because he's bored. And uh, he picks up a rock, and there's a talking ant under the rock. An ant talking. It's a talk an ant, right? Who knew Pixar wrote the Koran? <laughs> I mean, if you look at religious texts for what they are, which is metaphorical, it's no big deal. I, I just spent some years in Catholic school for some reason, and the priest never came near me. And um, <laughs> I'm still bitter about that. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to sue that church. But, you know, <laughs> it shouldn't be a problem. My husband's evangelical. Not just his drag name. He believes that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucked up, cra hallucinatory Brazilian, but he's hot and Brazilian, so <laughs> he fucks like a train. And um, <laughs> not a British train, because he comes on time, but he's very, <laughs> very powerful. Very... <laughs> I'm a bit damaged back there. I'm just saying it's a bit. Uh, if you go back there, it's just it's a there's a bit of it's a I'm bruised. It's a like a crime scene. It's like um, it's like CSI my hole. Seriously, my <laughs> after 12 years of marriage, my ass was like the back of Kennedy's head. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's it might be. <laughs> oh, I made them cry. I might be. Um, too much for some of you to handle. But anyway, <laughs> he's only 10% gay, but mm, at 10%. And I said, <laughs> I said, how do you justify your, your gay feelings along with your need for the approval of the hottest Jew on a stick? How do you justify your craving for man cunt along with your craving? Is it getting too Radio 4? Sorry. And he... <laughs> He's a caporal. I don't believe in the saints. I'm like, me neither. Till they sanctify Celine Dion, I'm not going to fucking play along. <laughs> and uh, he also has a private, personal relationship with Jesus. I mean, who doesn't? And uh, <laughs> I prefer his hairless period any other time. <laughs> um, <laughs> four years in that Catholic school room, and he's standing right in front of you, Jesus. Right? He's staring at you like you're the only thing left. All that intimacy. He's hung. He's nailed. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little gay kid with hormones up to my plucked eyebrows. Of course I'm thinking, what do you got, Jesus? And um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I knew I was queer when I was five. I mean, I wanted a cock in my mouth so bad I could taste it. <laughs> And I had a boyfriend who was five, or he said he was five. <laughs> he had a mustache and a driver's license, but you know, some, <laughs> some kids mature earlier. But I knew, I was that gay kid you've got in your family. We, everyone has a gay kid in the family, a little gay or a little lesbian, right? Or a little, a little bisexual like this one. Everybody's, right? Little, you've had a little, you've had some experience with, yeah, right? With him. Oh, no. We're going to have to break up into small discussion groups and talk about your feelings of abandonment and low self-esteem. <laughs> oh, what's going to happen next? Do you have a, where's your girlfriend? She's by there. In the back. You stay over there. All right, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheating if it's a guy, bitch. Relax. Jesus. <laughs> I dig... I, I, I've been with women. I have. I, I, I fingered a woman once. I did. <laughs> and she's here tonight. No, I did. I, I did. It was nice. I didn't mind. It was warm. It, uh, <laughs> my manicure dried faster, so I didn't mind. <laughs> it's, all <laughs> it's all the same. I was, but, I was, you know, I, I just like guys. And when I was five, I had a little boyfriend on I used to dance with my mother because women love dancing with their little gay sons between divorces. I was at that, 
that little homo at a, a family function telling people where to sit, choosing the music, goes, bossy little guy, right? <laughs> you you would have seen me at five years, thought that he's gonna suck cock in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, why wait? I uh, was <laughs> so thirsty, and um, <laughs> there was a drought. I mean, even. Uh, by high school, I knew, but people were so mean. This is a long time ago. It's so much easier now. People complain about woke and all that shit. Now, I like it. I mean, there there's more diversity on comedy stages. People feel more comfortable around one another. But also, you know, you have to worry when you're a little gay. It's fine, you know? But then, God, it, it's horrible, right? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> were you a little gay? Were you a little gay? Were you a little more? A little, little bit, yeah. It's terrible. In there. I mean, I met my stepmother, the one we cremated. And when I was, no, I did. And then when I was five, she said to me, I don't, I'm a waitress and I don't serve faggots. She, I know. I thought, is she hitting on me? And then, <laughs> but that was acceptable in those days, you know. And the, in high school, the kid, the boy, I had to play baseball. Oh, God. They made me play, they made me wear that costume, that baseball uniform, whatever. And um, put me in the right field where, ironically, the ball never goes. And I'd be there and they'd be like, <laughs> They'd be yelling, faggot. I'd be like, prove it. And um, <laughs> <laughs> they'd pin me in the dust, and I was like, ow, you're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you better not spit on me. I hate it when you do that. I've <laughs> 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 always known. I always knew. I never thought it was a problem, you know. So people draw all these. That's why this. I did this gig for the LGBTIQ plus community. LGBTIQ plus. Real mouthful and not in a good way. But I don't really. <laughs> never been really that comfortable with uh, designating a certain group of people and putting them over there. You know, I go to a gay bar. I don't want to be a gay bar. I want to be an everybody bar. That's why it's fun, right? That might be how I know you. <laughs> could be. I'm a lucky man. Oh yeah. I'm surprised you remember because I had your face pushed in the pillow the whole fucking time. Fucking man, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna rape the fuck out of you in two hours. Anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk home. Uh, <laughs> God, I let my strategy out. Anyway, so I always do that. <laughs> I was doing this event for these Welsh people, this uh, Welsh LG. Are there any Welsh people here? Any Welsh? Good, they're cunts. We were there. <laughs> and Welsh, you know, Cardiff will be great when they finish it, but I was there. And, um, <laughs> and uh, the club owner and I were arguing before the show. We didn't see eye to eye because mine are parallel. But he, um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he just said that I was, I was just too much. I'm like, I'm not too much. I saw you on YouTube. I don't know why they hired you. I'm not a fan. He said, just get to it and get it done. Right? Don't upset the audience. Because people, want, you know, it's never you guys. The audience, they want what they can get. But the club owners, the managers, not here, but uh, they, they want it funny, but not too funny. You know? Don't push them too far. We don't want complaints. Don't want to lose our grant. Where the fuck those Welsh people talk to? I have no idea. <laughs> but everyone's careful now. Everyone's cautious. I mean, I, COVID kind of changed all that. It made people really self-protective. I just did a show in Berlin. Are there any Germans here? No, it's a comedy club. But anyway, I just did a show. <laughs> oh, God. And, and, and Berlin looks great now, you know. I mean, I'm American. I don't expect to thank you, but it would be nice. But anyway. <laughs> We were, I was there, and the club owner said to me, um, he's breathing down my neck. He's standing right behind me, you know. Made me nervous before the show. I'm like, she's in the attic. And um, just a... <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it worked so well the last time. He said, you know, um, can you please, uh, can you not uh, mention the Holocaust in your act? I'm like, well, I wasn't going to open with it. <laughs> but the minute he dropped Holocaust in my brain, it was all I could fucking think about. And then... <laughs> And then he said, it's just that we've had a problem in Berlin with Nazis recently. <laughs> recently? <laughs> <laughs> is everyone rewriting history now? <laughs> the Holocaust Museum is right across the street, motherfucker. <laughs> Four floors of Holocaust. It's ground zero. And I went there. I want to see how the gays are treated, because gays died in the Holocaust, too. We don't get nothing. <laughs> it's all Jew, Jew, Jew. <laughs> Jealous of the Jews. <laughs> all that merch. 
to the Holocaust Museum, everywhere it's a chain, it's like Starbucks. <laughs> well, Yellow Star Bucks. <laughs> now, <laughs> you responded to that better than they did in Berlin. The thing is, <laughs> I can't help it. I drop bombs sometimes that without meaning to. I'm, I'm a no, I'm a comedian. That's my job to upset people. I, I thought, or not upset, but laugh, but you know, make the chair move with my mind, but you know. <laughs> Just make people kind of think about things. I want you to think differently about how gay men behave, that's all. We're not all mints and simlet faggots in the front row. Some of us <laughs> have a future. So anyway, <laughs> people ask me all the time, are you a comedian? Do you do it for a living? I'm like, yes. Are you sure? Yes, this is what I do. How long you? Well, 30 years I've been on the front line selling jokes, pissing people off, risking my life. <laughs> Jesus, this must be how, how Hamas must feel with the BBC. Well, th the BBC won't call them terrorists, but they label themselves that in their own charter. They must be pissed off. <laughs> Don't you think they're thinking, come on, BBC, what the fuck do we have to do? <laughs> We're working our asses off out here. Tractors, boots, guns, what more do you fucking want? If you want to be a terrorist of the BBC, you have to be Holly Willoughby. You have to. <laughs> you do, right? You <laughs> you've got to disrespect the queen. That's how you get it. Because that bitch has nothing, right? Hamas is on the front page. She's unemployed. It's fucked up. <laughs> so <laughs> I opened with that downstairs. It didn't work. Anyway, so yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. And it's hard in front of your own gay people, right? It's hard in front of your own peeps when you think you're going to do OK for them to sort of disown you. But I'm old. I know I'm 60, which is like 8,000 in gay years, or <laughs> 12 at the Vatican. I know that <laughs> I seem. It seems like, why is this faggot mobile? Why is he here? Well, <laughs> they hired me, and there's a woman in the front row, and I was chatting with her, this, a, a lovely lady. Well, not like you. She was not as lovely as you. You're gorgeous. Do you mind me saying a lovely lady? Is that all right? Nice rack. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear, right? Right? Tokyo, come in Tokyo. <laughs> Boobies are fun. And, um, <laughs> and she says to me, how dare you? She said, how dare you call me a woman? How dare you label my gender? I'm like, honestly, I was guessing. And um, <laughs> she said, I'm more than a woman. I'm, I'm going to become a guy. I'm going to buy a cock. I mean, I paraphrase. But that's <laughs> – it was longer than that because girls go oh, – no. But um, – and I'm a guy. I don't really hear what she's saying. But anyway, what she said was – and, you know, it makes sense if you're a woman buying a penis because it pays for itself in two years. But the surgery <laughs> – the surgery is very difficult. You know, changing from a female to a male, that transition surgery is very, you know how that works. They take the vagina and they talk some sense into it. So I'm just saying. <laughs> at that point, she leapt out of her chair and came at me. Women seated seem perfectly manageable, but <laughs> when they're running toward you in high heels, they're fucking terrifying because <laughs> suddenly I was like the enemy. I'm, I'm the punching bag. So she comes out, she wraps her hands around my neck really, really tight. And at first I'm like, Mm. And, um, <laughs> and, then, and then I realized she was angry, so I got harder. And then, yeah, I mean, harder for me at 60, right? Just warning you, when I come, it comes out in chunks. And um, it's, it's like tofu, just so you know. It's <laughs> so, so swallow it, don't question. Anyway, so I'm going to make you bleed. Anyway, the, so yes. Um, <laughs> I'm like, madam, what are you doing? I, I, I'm wearing cashmere. And, <laughs> and she, I don't know what cashmere is. I'm Welsh. <laughs> we can fuck it. We can't wear it. And then, <laughs> and then I said, if you remove your, fi your hands, you'll, you'll find I happen to be gay myself. And she says, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <gasps> I'm healed. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, I looked around for my husband. He's on the balcony selling drugs, but at least he's working. And then... <laughs> Finally, he rushed in and swooped me up and dragged me back to our hotel room with our tails between our shaved legs. And that, are your testicles shaved? Are your, are your testicles <laughs> shaved? Yeah, yeah, they I are. Oh, you, you shaved it for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to fuck your eye socket. Anyway, so <laughs> my husband said, <laughs> I'm going to smash the teeth in your head. My husband said, <laughs> not going to be a wall call. My husband said, 
Kapuro, I want to get married. I'm like, honey, nobody gets married anymore, right? Nobody does. People say, are you married, madam? You. We're happily married. To, to whom? To wh which person? He's, where is he? At home? Where you fucking belong, right? <laughs> You've been married for a while? 15 years. Well done. Great. Kids? <laughs> Two kids. Oh, your daughter. Oh. Oh, you made her pussy tired. <laughs> but you were worth it. <laughs> Out with your mom on a Saturday night, you just really like each other. <laughs> right? Do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, something? Single. Single? Looking to mingle. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, leave it to me. I'll handle it. Oh. <laughs> Well, when you get proposed to, make sure it's romantic. Okay. Have a high bar about that. Because my husband, he lowered the lights, and he brought up the music, and then he came in my eye. And, uh, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. I uh, <laughs> lost a contact, but I gained a soulmate. He said, he said, Kapuro, I want to say those vows in front of people I love, which is sweet, right? But I'm like, honey, you meet people I love, because people you love live in Brazil, think you're heterosexual, think I'm a woman. And I can't be a woman, I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they're jokes. Anyway, you guys have been barely tolerable. And, um, <laughs> but thank you for the uh, human sacrifice. And uh, have a lovely night. Good night, thank you very much. <laughs>what a maniac have you guys had a good night it's been a good fucking time so a few things toilets downstairs are closed so if you want to use them on the way out this one's open and the one that the sign across the street they're friends with us so they let us use theirs if you want to come into the late late show uh we're giving everyone who's bought tickets to the earlier ones deals so the tickets are 12 quid and it's a completely new lineup that we'll be having both upstairs and downstairs and uh, my name's been Kate Barron. If you want to follow me, I'll have a little QR code because I do a bunch of podcasts and other shit. But you guys have been absolutely fucking lovely. Thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of your night.